everybody would have a different color and a, and a unique brand and identity. And then look at the, the graphic below us if you're watching on video. And you can see there's a lot of red. There's a lot of uh, warm tones. There's really the only thing that stands out when you look at this screen is the uh, breakers. Which is like, what, you're, you're named after a wave? You're the breakers? Welcome back to the 11th Island, everybody. I'm Brad, here with Chris. Today, we're here to talk about the big news in the football world. It's the USFL officially coming back for 2022. Hasn't been around since the 80s. Pretty exciting. All new ownership group. Going to be a new spring football league. Chris, what are we starting with? Well, we're going to show you the teams, what everybody's after today. You don't even have to... You don't even have to watch three hours or listen to three hours of Colin Cowherd. We're just going to give this right to you. So first off, in the North Division, we have the Michigan Panthers, the New Jersey Generals, the Philadelphia Stars, and finally, the Pittsburgh Maulers. And then in the Southern Division, we got the Birmingham Stallions, the Houston Gamblers, the New Orleans Breakers, and the Tampa Bay Bandits. Brad, what are you thinking of these teams so far? Well, it's interesting. I mean, not many times in a league where you see a north and south division. Normally, it's east and west. So, that, so that's kind of interesting here. And I mean, these are all teams that were around in the '80s when they folded. And I believe '86, there was 12 teams in the league. These, all eight of these teams, were iterations of the '86 league. The same, the same cities, the same names, which I thought was questionable. There's no ownership left over. It's complete new regime in it of course it's, i mean 40 years ago almost mm -hmm. this league folded i would have thought that you kind of come in with a fresh face even the xfl which was mm -hmm. still owned by vince mcmahon changed things up when they came back and you can see from the logos on the screen here if you're listening to the youtube version if you're on the audio podcast make sure to check us out on youtube as well but you can see that they're kind of retro style logos so mm -hmm. they, they are trying to keep that history with the league i don't know if that makes sense given that I think your target market is people like us who weren't even alive at that time. What do you, what are you thinking? Of these well, teams, I think, I think the interesting thing is I saw somebody, they were talking about leaks this morning before, of course, on Colin, Colin, uh, Colin Cowherd's show, they announced all the teams. He went through them all, saw them for the first time, as he said, you know, so they leaked and they leaked because half, I mean, half the teams they had their t-shirts on the website early, which I think is just part of the marketing. Oh, it leaks, you know, whatever. But there was also people that dug around and found trademarks that were filed for these names in the last couple of days, which doesn't make sense to me I, why you would go back to the old names if you didn't have the copyrights at the time. Because I think a justification would be like, well, we were paying these copyrights just in case, you know, we just had these around. Whoever had the rights to the USB, uh, FL. You know, once it, everything, all the teams got sold out or whatever, it all folded. You keep these copyrights around just in case. And then, oh, we have the copyrights we've been paying for them. Let's use them. But no, we had to go back and repay for these team names, to file for these team names. It seems kind of kind of funny to me. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. And I mean, the, the city choices, I, I thought were... They were kind of odd, I would say. Like, there's some Birmingham, which is rumored to be that we'll get into it later. The the host city for all mm -hmm. of the games was kind of weird. I'm trying to think of like Michigan. I, Michigan's a pretty big place. Where are they playing in Michigan? It's kind of weird to have a state as opposed to a city name. It's it, like there's some weird things going on with this that I thought that they could have done a little bit better. Something that the XFL, they really tried to pinpoint markets. Like one of the things that the XFL did really well is they went to St. Louis after the, St. Louis lost the Rams. They really wanted to embrace a football team. St. Louis is a perfect place for a team like this, a, a league like this to go and really get that city behind them. Instead, they're going to a place like Pittsburgh where, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that uh, well, there's such a Steeler. I mean yeah, I, I, th I think to think about alt football, I mean, Steelers are an obvious comparison, but in terms of alt football, I think with a team name like the Maulers in uh, Pittsburgh, you get kind of a Hamilton Tiger Cats situation going on. I think that's what they're, the culture that they're going to be successful in building. I think that's going to be one of the yeah. biggest markets, actually, for uh, this okay. U USFL. No, uh, and, and I think the one smart move was to stay as far east as possible keep it north south not east and west if you're going to be centered in birmingham it's very difficult to justify starting this league having it in one central place that's on the east coast 
and then keeping it oh so far away and let's say we have a team in la we have a team in oakland or yada 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 it's it, that'd be very tough to pull off i think to to kind of pivot this season into oh 2023 we're going to be home stadiums for everybody you know so oh, i, th- and I also think it's a situation where if things go well ex- i'm sure they're looking to expand they will expand into i'm sorry about the dog they will expand into some of the west coast market there and they they can em- embrace that but for for now you're right i i agree with you that is so- that's something that i hadn't even really thought about and i think i think one of the another smart thing forget the fact that you have that one centralized location you want to build out of birmingham you know so you want to stay on that east coast just for that but also you got to think the xfl's coming in into play you know you're coming into play the nfl's still going strong the cfl's still doing its thing very close to some of these markets and then you have gambling coming in i mean everybody's saying the reason that these these things are blowing up is because now we can gamble and everyone's favorite sport to gamble is football in the united states and you can why not have that year round because if you can put a bet on it you're going to have eyes on the screen no matter even what the quality of play is if there's intrigue if you if you really have parity i think parity is the biggest thing if you can have competitiveness if you can balance out the qbs you know yeah you can have football all year round so i i think if you stake out the territory and you say look we can't what one of the things the xfl was able to do because there was nobody else doing it at in that time slot was kind of sketch out the whole map of the united states Maybe the US uh, FL is saying, well, you know what? If we just corner the one side of the country, this one side of the market, I mean, we could just own that territory and let, you know, if the XFL comes back, maybe push them further west with some of their teams. I don't know what that looks like. I'm just spitballing. I'm not a businessman. Well, I think we can roll into the what we know section here and kind of look at the time frame. So they're looking at starting in mid-April of April 2022 and run through to the end of June in a 10-week season where each team is going to play the teams in their division twice, the teams in the other division once. Now, their main competitor is going to be the XFL. I feel like this was, being in the one centralized location, this was very rushed. Mm -hmm. to just be a year ahead of the XFL. But the XFL season is looking to be, they normally, right after the Super Bowl ends, so early February Mm -hmm. until the end of April. So there really isn't going to be very much overlap, maybe a couple weeks for the end of the Mm -hmm. XFL and the start of the USFL. And looking at the Canadian thing for the CFL, they're normally starting around June-ish, so there's not much overlap with that either. So they're kind of inserting themselves right into that sweet spot where there's 10 weeks of really no football, Mm -hmm. where... They, there's going to be no competition here, I don't think. Yeah, because I, because I think going forward, we have to assume, and, and I'm going to say this as a huge XFL, I love the XFL, you know, we want it to happen, and you don't want to speak too soon, but I want to say, like, let's move forward thinking that the XFL is a guarantee, and if you're the USFL, you have to assume the XFL is a guarantee coming back in 2023, and it's going to be a, a thing, because you think about how successful it was pre-covid and all of that sort of situation it was unlucky that's the only reason that it's not around today unlock unlucky situation and i mean you got a guy like the rock who has enough money like vince mcmahon did to kind of pump as much money into a a, yes. a hot start so i mean it's smart that they didn't kind of get a little bit you know oh we're gonna we're gonna push them out because i think i think the xfl's brand they're years ahead of where the usfl is and it's a lot as you said let's not forget the point that they're rushing this out to get out a year before the xfl that is a guarantee that's what's going on here and that's why they're in the centralized location it's why all of a sudden it's like oh well you know uh, we're making a huge announcement and it's like oh okay it's on kellen cowherd and oh i'm gonna tune into Co- I- i'm i'm listening to to colin at 12 and he hasn't th- hasn't talked about it for two hours oh we're gonna drop this huge news at the end of the second hour and then when we go into the third hour, we're not even going to address it. I was listening to the show. I I, I I turned it off for 10 minutes. I missed it. What kind, of, what kind of garbage is this? They're rushing this. I want to watch football. I want to watch football in April. Let's make this happen. Okay. I That's what say, we know. Is it, is it concerning? And this is concerning for me that there has not been a spring football league that has been successful. And I mean successful as in finished season 
in quite a long time. We're looking at the AAAF or whatever it was called, the Spring Football League, the XFL. These have, for reasons of the pandemic, for financial reasons, they've all stopped halfway through the season. The only really alt football league that has a major following, aside from arena football, but as like we're Canadians, I'm not aware of how popular that is in the States. My understanding is not very. So other than the CFL, there hasn't really been an alt football league as big as this that has been successful for a period of time. Does that scare you away? Because I know scared money don't make no money. Mm. But the, the blueprint isn't exactly there for success here. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm a bit scared. Uh, in terms of just looking at the teams, looking at the logos, it's not very inventive to me. It's kind of no. strange. There's a lot of red in all. The the biggest concern at the end of the day is that there's a lot of red. There's gonna be a lot of red on these jerseys. There's not a lot of interest. You know, there wasn't. Mm -hmm. There there doesn't seem to be as much love and thought put into this compared to the XFL. Because I'm always gonna compare this to the XFL. That's just direct in my mind, right. looking at these teams. As you should. And one of, the things, one of the things that the XFL did very well was market the teams to the current times because you have to be young, you have to be hip, you got to be trendy. And also, I mean, they had just something simple like the colors. Look at all the XFL, all eight XFL teams' colors. Everyone had a distinct color. Everyone had, you had to, I mean, you ha they had to give a team like the Renegades, who's like, we're outlaws, you know, they had to give that team the color baby blue just so that everybody would have a different color and a, and a unique brand and identity. And then look at the, the graphic below us if you're watching on video. And you can see there's a lot of red. There's a lot of uh, warm tones. There's really the only thing that stands out when you look at this screen is the uh, breakers, which is like what? You're, you're named after a wave? You're the breakers? Yeah, I'm not it's, even sure I understood. When I saw when they were the team Breakers and then the logo came out as a wave, I'm like, I am not understanding the, the, the connection here. But it is what I would say, too, one of the things is they've made it clear that they're going to follow NFL rules. And there could be some changes. Mike Pereira is the league, uh, uh, the head of officiating for this. Mm -hmm. One of the things that all football leagues like the XFL and the CFL do great is that they're different. You're mm -hmm. watching a different style of football, and it's because no matter what, this is going to be a lesser product than that of an NFL, and it's going to be probably less exciting than that of a college, just given the nature of the players and the skill levels. And I'm not saying that these are going to be higher skill level than college, but college just brings a different level of excitement once you, once you bring in the student element of it. So when you bring in these other alt football leagues that they have so much different rule sets, you feel like you're watching a different game, that the, the skill levels, they don't have to be up, up at that level because it's different than the NFL. It's not a carbon copy of it with just minor league players. That's mm -hmm. what they're setting themselves up to be here. Well, I, I really, minor league is a huge word for it, I think, because... I feel as if they're really leaning into we're going to be, whereas the XFL wants to compete with the NFL, wants to kind of ch -ch -ch, like whatever you do, we're going to do better and different and we're going to change the game. And then I think the way I've seen, especially the fact that Fox is involved, who is a heavy partner of the NFL. The well, fact I mean, Fox isn't I, Fox is running. The show. Yeah, dude, well, the reason involved, that Fox yeah. is running the show is I think that this has been actually done with the NFL's blessing almost, where we're gonna take your rule set, we're gonna make, we're gonna simulate NFL games, and use this as a developmental league. I think there's going to by the end, what by the time this is established and we we get a season where everyone's playing uh, in a centralized location, we're figuring out the kinks, we're working it out. We're figure, like I think this becomes a direct line between that and the NFL. It's not going to be a, obviously a pure minor league system where every team has an affiliate, but it's going to be something where uh, it's like a redemption island. Whereas the XFL is, you know, go off here. Like this is your option. You can pursue this now. And the CFL is okay. Go, I'm going to go pursue this and make a career out of this. I mean, there's guys that still move into the NFL, but. The XFL and the CFL are ends in their own means, respectable men's ends in their own means, and people make great careers out of them. Whereas this, I feel, gearing well, I itself... People have made great careers out of the XFL. I mean... As a okay, player, well, uh, hypothetically... Uh, hype, I, I, I'm speaking of a hypothetical CF or XFL yes. 
that will well, exist in the next, like will be established in the next five years because I think they have a model that's going to work. Yeah, and and I think the I mean the goal long term goal for this league should be the American version of the CFL. I mean the name in itself for this United States Football League, Canadian Football League. Yeah, but, but the, it's the, copied the, and paste. No, but the U.S. version of the CFL is the NFL. The NFL itself, is a, <laughs> but the NFL, the NFL is a global entity, I think, and that in itself is that is out of the picture something different. I think I don't think that's comparable. We nobody mm. will ever get to that level. Mm. So I, I think when you look at the CFL, where it's something where they've been running consistently for years, mm -hmm. there's other than the COVID, there's not really worry year to year of the league shutting down, mm. and players have been able to start their career in the CFL and their career in the CFL and be mm -hmm. successful money wise i think that is a situation where your league becomes a success i mean that takes a long time to build to that level mm -hmm. but hopefully they're able to do it i think we can jump into the, our thoughts here what are your thoughts chris and i'll give mine too on what would make this league successful in year one um i i think one thing that's going to make this league successful in year one is really getting the faces out of these players Make us care about these players. I mean, you want to take a page from the XFL's book, maybe not copy them directly and kind of learn from their mistakes. Don't be interviewing guys right after they miss key uh, kicks. You know, but the, mm -hmm. but what you want to do is, I think, really exploit, not expo exploit's a bad word, really bad word for this scenario, but you really use the fact that all these guys are living in a centralized location. You know, they are going to be i imagine there's going to be a dorm set up somewhere they're going to be or on a on a th in a three star resort just hanging out going playing football i'm talking i mean fox is involved so obviously there's like a, this is being designed by broadcasters get us inside access we want like a, not don't reality tv show it up don't make the mistakes of the first iteration of the XFL but you know have some of those storylines. Have that FaceTime. Tell the players, okay, this is a guide. This is how you go, how social media can be used for your benefit here. And here's how it can really hurt you here. And get your face out. Show people inside the compound. This is what we're doing. This is how I love football. I'm here to play football. This is why I'm playing football. Maybe I have a kid at home. Maybe I have, you know, uh, bills I got to pay. And I have this skill. And I really want to prove myself. Really lean into that. And I think this can be really successful if they kind of ignore, if they take the whole thing and it's like, oh, this is just a camp. Like we want to ignore the fact that this is all one location. We want people to think that this is a real legitimate league where everybody's got home team. Like we don't want to, we don't want to make this look like summer camp, which it is. Mm -hmm. If they kind of try to steer away from that and try to be more than what they are, it's going to, it's not going to work. What do you think, Brad? I, I I think I th like what you said. I completely agree with. But even if they do all of that right, you know, if my, if they do everything right, there is 16 employment positions that this league will fail or be successful with, and that is the eight head coaches and the eight starting quarterbacks. They need to bring in a good mix of name worthy ones that football fans immediately know that name and are going to want to tune in and they need to bring in a good mix of prospects that can kind of establish themselves we're talking about like a pj it's pj walker mm -hmm. in the XFL. pj walker yes yeah that proved himself on the field but the xfl never really had that oh this name i want to show up for right maybe the kind of landry jones there's eight quarterbacks they need to all either have high potential or you already know them and want to tune in for them in their competitive on the field we can't mm. have any stinkers and coaches we need eight coaches who are maybe not name worthy because there's not that many name worthy coaches but mm. football fans should know of them they should be competent they should know how to lead franchises because this has to start right immediately or mm. it will fail well, so I and, I, and 16, I mean, to sp those 16 holes are what will make or break this league to speak to the coaches. I mean, yeah, maybe not people that not know the names, but you have enough press right now. I think there's enough buzz that if you announce something right now, X is going to coach people are going to look that person up and they need to have that Wikipedia. You have to have an impressive Wikipedia, I think, because people are willing to do the research onto this, but there's got to be something to research. You know what I mean? 
No, I, I, I agree. I think those, if they get what I said, and with those 16, essentially 16 employment opportunities, they fill those, they fill at least 10 of those 16, right? And they do what you said and really kind of embrace the media aspect of it. Maybe some of them come on the podcast here and really kind of get their faces out there. I think this could be a successful league. That being said, Chris, we need to pick a favorite team here. Okay. So and and if you guys are watching, feel free to I mean, feel free to take the strategy that we're doing to pick a favorite team. This is a great opportunity to pick a favorite team with your friends if you guys all cheer for different football teams. I'm a New England Patriots fan. He's a New York Giants fan. We use this opportunity the same thing with the XFL to make sure we cheer for the same team. So Chris And also, how are we I mean, going to we're do this? live in Canada so there's no ties to any of these places so yeah, we're free so men we can, yeah yes exactly we're free to to choose so Brad what and there's was not the even scenario? like a Buffalo team that would be close I would say so I, I mean Michigan would be kind of close yeah I think but, well here's the thing I think what we should do is we should each pick a north team we should each pick a south team and then we should pick a team that we refuse to cheer for so each of us bring two teams of choice one that we refuse to 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 cheer for those four minus any that get refused go into a mixifier thing randomize it the one that comes out we're the new number one fans for okay who wants to pick first all right so first that i'm gonna take off right because we're taking off first well, you can you can choose in whatever order you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose my two and then the refusal first. Okay. All right. Why don't you go first then? I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. So my north selection will be the Michigan Panthers. Okay. And my south selection is going to be the Birmingham Stallions. Okay. So then my. Uh... My my first the the north selection is going to be the Maulers, and then my uh, south suggestion is going to be oh. the Breakers. Okay, my refusal is I refuse to cheer for a Pittsburgh football team. Get that out of there. <laughs> All right, and then my refusal is going to be. Uh, did you say the Philadelphia Stars? No, I said the, the Michigan Panthers. <laughs> so then I'm going to refuse to to pick the Stars. Okay, well, I didn't pick them anyway. I picked, okay, I picked so the Michigan then, Panthers. Yeah, the but Birmingham I just want to make it clear. I don't want to cheer for the Stars, okay? Yeah, I mean, if, if you were good them and not the Pittsburgh team, I would refuse them too. So, okay. I, so who did, did you pick the Breakers? None of, yeah. Neither of us picked the Gamblers. Well, I, kinda took well this. I think A, because everyone's going to pick the Gamblers. Everyone's going to yes. pick the Gamblers. They, they are the coolest. And then the second is I just I, – I like the fact that it's blue. I look at this and okay. it just it's the only thing that stands out. Okay, but who was your who was your east team or your north team, sorry? The north the team? No, 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 no. It was the uh the Maulers. But we oh, took yeah, that yeah. out. I told you you couldn't bet. Yeah, yeah, okay. So so what do we we have the Michigan Panthers, the Stallions, and the Breakers. And the Breakers, yes. So do we so do we want to randomize it up? Do you even have the randomizer ready? Uh, no, but I could get that ready real <laughs> fast. Okay, Brad. Okay. Uh, or do we want to debate here and pick a team? Oh, okay, so. let's just debate here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this is what I'm saying, all right? The Breakers, it, it's blue. It's going to stand out. We're Argos fans. It's going to go with all our Argos stuff. That's a good point. It's, See, it's, it's me, good synergy. It's good synergy. See, for me, Michigan, though, we picked the Seattle Dragons for the XFL. There's no way we're ever getting to Seattle to watch a game. It is within the realm of possibility that we can be in Michigan. It's probably more than likely that we could go to Michigan. Sold. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's it. In, <laughs> in the first and only round of the team draft, we pick the Michigan Panthers. We go. All right, the Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that video just. <laughs> okay, Brad. Yeah. Now, uh, now that the any last thoughts. If you're an alt football fan, stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll be releasing our 2021 CFL playoff preview. If you haven't been following, we do weekly videos for that every week. If you are interested in the USFL, trust me. If you're even if you're American, watch some CFL playoffs. It is great football. And if you like, if you're gonna watch the USFL, you would like the CFL. Trust me, 
you would. And with that being said, 350, 500 subscriber giveaway on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, we have audio podcasts wherever you find your podcasts. If you're on the podcast, we're also on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, and rate. And we will see you tomorrow for our great help. See you later.